Hey guys, um, so this is something I've always kind of wanted to do, was kind of do a, I guess a solo podcast, just talking about, you know, Cyphus or I guess some, some of my takeaways um, philosophically from Cyphus training uh, that I've kind of learned over the years, either coming up with it or, you know, participating in it or just witnessing it. Um, unfold like on the turf by the people that do it but uh, obviously kind of in the situation that everybody's in right now um, I'm finding myself uh, it's not business as usual and I I want to keep this as as light as possible I don't want it to um, be something that's uh, an additional um, drag or worry or concern this I want this to be somewhat of a a vacation from um, everything that's kind of going on right now. But any anytime I've had, I guess, uncertainty or adversity in my life, I've always turned to some form of creativity to kind of help get me through or process. And um, one of those things was Cyphus training. Um, I came up with Cyphus training uh, a little over 10 years ago. And the reason why I want to start off with this is because I had a question about it recently on on a Facebook post, people, somebody asked me, well, what is Cyphus? And for those of you tuning in <laughs> that are, uh, you know, Cyphus training faithful, um, obviously you know what Cyphus training is, but the question comes at a unique time because I'm always reflecting on it, uh, you know, what it is that Cyphus training is. And um, I've always said it's more than just a workout. And that's definitely true for me and I believe that's true for many people uh, that do do it and know what it is um, so I apologize to people who are you know regulars of Cyphus training tuning in to try to they want to hear about like technical stuff and how to get better at flexibility and how to improve strength or range of motion um, I can I can I can cover that in the coming days we're gonna have the time um, but I suppose what I'm saying is, I don't know. I I'm not selling. I'm not selling you a product right now. I'm just kind of riffing and just kind of talking, and my thoughts are kind of meandering um, into uh, just some more of the philosophical stuff and the stuff I feel like is more important, to be honest. And I feel like I'm just going to be posting these little clips, just to, just as a way to kind of open up as a community, whether, whether you do Cyphus training or not, but you, if you've been doing Cyphus training and you kind of, um, <clears throat> want to hear my deeper take on things, you know, I promote something called the form first mentality, and that's really the basis of what I'd like to discuss, but you need to know what Cyphus training is first before you even kind of walk down the path of how it can help you, um, uh, mentally, physically, and, uh, emotionally. So, um, Cyphus training at its core is a sport that I came up with. It's a sport in the sense where you show up to a facility, it looks like an indoor miniature football field. You got end zones, you know, just like a football field, but it's, they're 60 feet apart. And similar to football, you score points by going from end zone to end zone. Um, and we do that by doing something called tasks or traveling exercises. And we have over 600 different variants of exercises, anything from running, jumping, crawling, pushing weight, carrying weight, dragging weight, essentially like throwing weight, crawling, pushing weight, carrying weight, dragging weight, essentially like throwing weight. And there are points assessed to each movement in each exercise and the goal is to complete as many exercises as you can in an hour's time. And then there's a formula that spits out what your fitness level is or your fitness IQ, which we call ROQ or Boulder. Um, and ROQ stands for relative overall quotient. And so you're working out for an hour doing um, a myriad of different exercises primarily body weight, but you have a plate, a 25, a 35, or 45, or 55 pound plate. And some of the exercises are valued more and some are less. 
and the goal is to complete as many as you can and do them as correctly as possible. So that is something called circuits, and circuits are the way that the workouts unfold. And the workouts are not just like a simple checklist of exercises to do because that would get monotonous and we've got so many different exercises that uh, it would just be really daunting to try to you know recall every single one in a checklist pattern. And the whole idea was to be creative and engage your mind and have the people that are doing it focus on, okay, where am I in the workout? How do I navigate through it and stay present in the moment and maybe a step ahead as to, to where the, uh, the, the, the path of the workout is going to take them. And that adds an element of strategy and, um, I guess, expertise. And, and, and if you're a veteran of Cyphus, you know it, ad it adds gamesmanship to it. Um, that you're always, you know, you're always challenged with something new and it, it just keeps you, it keeps you present. And that, that's, that's a really important component of Cyphus training. So to kind of summarize, Cyphus is a sport that is a workout designed to keep you engaged. You score points by going from end zone to end zone, doing a number of different tasks in a different pattern every day and multiple patterns every day. And then you're keeping a score, and then that score is a score from zero to a thousand. And every day you get a score that's logged onto our website. And on our website, we keep averages and all sorts of statistics and metrics that will help you not only analyze your progress, but give you another, um, another goal to climb or another way to kind of compare yourself or what I call a dangling carrot uh, to chase after. And I came about it um, with a number of different uh, goals in mind to give somebody motivation through competition. And I think competition is our biggest motivator, um, whether it's survival or it's, uh, you know, sports. And Sightfist in particular was designed, I designed it for professional hockey players who believe it or not, needed a little kick in the kick in the rear end in their summer off season programs to, to be going at it 110% because <laughs> the athletes, professional athletes are really, really good at their sport. And I think they're really, really good at their sport because they are so competitive in nature. But when you got to pull them into the gym and they're doing work to, to excel in the thing that they're just naturally gifted at, Sometimes it's hard to to get the um, the average, I guess you could say, professional athlete motivated to work on the um, the, the physical basis of, of like their biomechanics and all the facets that build up the the physical specimens that they are. They're just so naturally gifted that it's hard to keep some of them motivated. So I flipped it kind of on its head and took their what I thought their most, you know, tangible trait in all of them in their competitiveness and, and use that to, to, to pull more um, out of them. And so I designed a workout that was essentially a competition and that's kind of how, that was like the first goal of Cyphus and the first, I guess, phase of it. Um, and it worked so well that other people started noticing, hey, what, what are these guys doing? Not only are they doing weird exercises, um, but they, they seem to be like, like killing it. And, um, it looks like something I, I'd want to do. So people started gain, gaining momentum. People started asking me if they could participate in it. And so I opened it up to just general members at, um, a facility that was, I was a personal trainer and a manager of this facility that had turf. And, and, and so we kind of built a, a culture around that. And then, um, in that phase, the scoring system wasn't all that you would know it to be now if you're familiar with what, what it is we do. Uh, it took me a good six to nine months to come up with the scoring system or the ROQ formula. And that was a lot of work. I mean, that, that that's probably the, the second most 
thing I'm most proud of when it comes to uh, reflecting on sightless training is just the, um, I would say, the accuracy of the ROQ and your, your boulder as a, a measure of your fitness ability. Um, the, the, the number one thing I'm most proud of is the culture that it cultivates, the community that's created by it and the form first mantra that people can connect to or discover, I would say, um, through exercise and competition that allows them to learn more about themselves and other people and how to treat themselves to treat other people uh, the way that I think is um, ethical and moral and for the better. Um, and I think that's where uh, I think that's where I'm going to end for now because that's where this is headed. And and I like I think uh, I mean I I know there's a big spiritual component to it. So if you're somebody who does sight this training, there's a lot more to having the right form and balancing that with your need to score higher. Um. And I think a lot of people could learn and benefit from that, from understanding that mentality. And so in the coming days, that's really where I would like to steer the conversation, uh, how you can use the methods of sightless training to live your best self, to um, understand yourself better, understand others better, and really put things into perspective and really... Um, know what's most important. And I think that's a really important thing at this juncture with everything that we're going through. So with that, we'll, we'll see you on the turf.